Welcome. It's me, Aaron the Artist. Let's talk about art commissions and how to get them. Now, I've been taking commissions continuously for about two and a half years now, and I've had three to four commissions every month for the whole time. I've learned quite a lot about the business of commissions that I can share with you here today. I'm going to go over how you know if you're ready to take commissions, what kind of things you could be doing for commission, how to price your commissions, and how to market yourself to find work. Basically, everything you need to know to get started. One of the questions I'm asked a lot is, how do you know if you're ready to take commissions? I've seen other artists that I respect say that your work needs to be of a pretty high quality or close to a professional level before you take commissions. I absolutely understand that advice. It makes good sense to make sure that your work is high quality first because you want your product to be the best it can be if your business is going to be successful. Having said that, I didn't do that when I started. I just jumped in and tried to find clients because, at the time, I needed the money. At that time, I don't think my art was professional quality at all. But I thought to myself, well, let's just try it. Maybe my work is good enough, and maybe it isn't. But let's just see. If people buy it, then it's fine. And if not, then I haven't lost anything. If you're really keen to get started, I think the best way to find out if you're ready to take commissions is just to try it. All right, so say you've decided you are ready to take commissions. What are you actually gonna sell and who will you sell it to? This takes a little bit more thought than a lot of people put into it. You might be good at drawing, but you'll have a hard time finding work if all you have to say is, I'm good at drawing. Does anybody want something drawn? You'll have an even harder time if your Instagram or Twitter or whatever you use is full of random drawings of all sorts of different things. Sometimes portraits, then anime, then a webtoon, then a landscape. It's too general. You need to set everything up so that you look like a specialist. Imagine I'm looking to buy a portrait of my family. I've got two artists I'm considering. One of them says that they specialize in drawing portraits, and the other person says that they draw things for commission. I'm going with the specialist every time because it feels more credible. So you'll find that you can get a lot more work if you target specific audiences with specific things. In my case, I started doing Dungeons and Dragons character design specifically, and I would do portraits, half body drawings, or full body drawings. So now I know who my customers are, D&D players, and I know the three different things I'm going to sell. I filled my Instagram page with all of my character designs and I didn't post any other random art that wasn't to do with what I was selling. Any players who stumbled across my work might be inspired to commission me because they see that it's my speciality. Once we've specialized in something, we need to think about how we're going to stand out from the competition. There are hundreds of artists out there who do D&D character commissions to compete with me, and there are loads of other artists out there probably doing the same things that you want to do. Why should someone choose you? What's special about what you can do? That's called your unique selling proposition in business terms. What is it that you are doing that other people in the space either can't do or at least aren't doing right now? A good example to follow here is Starbucks, the coffee shop company. On the face of it, they just sell coffee. Why go to Starbucks and not to McDonald's or a petrol station or the little cafe on the corner? Well, according to Starbucks, it's because they sell premium coffee personalized to your tastes. They're not the cheapest, but they say it's the highest quality and it's personal to you. And that makes them different to the other places that sell coffee. Now, I'm not saying that your unique selling proposition should be that you make premium quality personalized artwork, just like Starbucks makes premium quality personalized coffee. That's probably not a good idea, since there is almost always someone who has better quality work out there and all commission artists personalize work to their clients anyway. But the point is, what you need as a commission artist is this kind of unique selling proposition, something that makes what you do different to the other people in the same market. This is a very difficult part, and I don't want to underestimate it at all. For a long time, I didn't even have a unique selling proposition of any kind. 
What you'll need to do is market research. Look at what all of the other people selling similar things to you are doing. What options are they offering? What are their prices? How much is the client involved in the process? Look at everything they do and try to figure out some way that you can do things differently. You don't have to do everything completely different. Starbucks use coffee beans just like all the other coffee shops do. But you need that one thing that is different that other people will find value in. While we're talking about the products you're going to sell, it's worth thinking about all the options that you have. A lot of us get started with character commissions, but there are really all sorts of options. You could be doing not just character designs, but full illustrations with characters in different environments, or you could do stylized portraits of other people, or pets. One idea that I saw recently is taking commission for other people's social media branding. So you could design YouTube banners or profile pictures, Twitch emotes, animated graphics that can go in people's videos. If you know how, you could design and rig VTuber characters. You could do NSFW commissions, D&D character sheets, book covers. Most artists want to do character design commissions, but you can get a lot more money and there's probably a lot less competition doing things like Twitch emotes, animated graphics and VTuber rigs. The only downside to those is there's obviously a technical side to it that you'll need to learn. But if you like the sound of that sort of thing, I'd really consider setting yourself up doing those kind of very niche commissions instead of the more common type. If your art is good enough and specific enough, you could even market yourself as making custom assets for indie video games. You could especially do that if you're any good with pixel art or 3D modeling. If you've worked out what kind of thing you're going to do, the next question is, how do you decide how much to charge? How do you price your work? Well, as I said, it really depends on what kind of work you're doing. You should probably charge more for technical or niche type commissions, especially if someone is going to be using it commercially on their website or their YouTube channel or their Twitch or their video game or whatever. But I know this struggle pretty well. You don't want to set your prices too high because you don't think you're that good and you don't think people will want to pay for your work. You kind of think that charging a lower amount will mean that more people are interested. So you set your prices at $15. I really encourage you not to do this for two reasons. First, if you set really low prices, then you end up working long hours and not getting much money for it. A lot of my commissions take me five to six hours to complete. So if I were to charge $15, that's less than $3 an hour, which is terrible. The second reason is that charging less for your art encourages people to think that, in general, art isn't valuable. The more of us that charge peanuts for our art, the more other people will get used to it and the less likely anybody is to pay higher prices for anything if you decide to increase prices later. Well, okay, here are my current prices to give you an idea. My suggestion is that, for the sort of character art that a lot of us want to do for commission, I wouldn't do anything for less than $50. That's just going to respect the time it takes you to make a piece, the skill you have to have to make the piece, the tax you will have to pay, and any fees you pay to PayPal or similar services. I'd start there as a floor price. Then as you get more comfortable doing commissions and the quality of your work improves, you can slowly increase your prices. All I did was every couple of months I increased the price by $5. Now, I know you're worried at this point. You don't want to charge too high in case nobody will pay it. I know for certain that there is a market of people who will pay reasonable rates for quality artwork. I know because I've had a lot of those clients myself. And I know people who charge way more than me and are still queued up on commissions for the next few months. So absolutely do not worry about your prices being raised too high. I mean, don't go charging $1,000 for a piece if it's your first time taking commissions, right? But if your rates are between $50 and $250, don't worry about overcharging if that's what you're happy with. Just try it. See if anybody buys. If they don't, you either improve your quality or improve your marketing, and then try again. Speaking of marketing, the last thing. We know what we're selling, we know who we're selling it to, and we know what price we're selling it. But how the hell do we find people who are willing to buy? The first thing you need to do is to make all of your commission information easy to access. Make a commission sheet with your prices on it, and with examples of your work to show people what they can buy. 
don't just put in your bio that your commissions are open and ask people to message you for prices. You'd be surprised how many people are put off by having to send a DM to someone asking for prices, especially if it turns out that they can't afford the price that you give them. Just put your prices up publicly on your website or on your Instagram or whatever and make it easy for people to decide whether they can afford it straight away. Make it clear, short and to the point. Have an online portfolio of your work somewhere so that someone can easily see past examples of your commissions. Wherever that portfolio is, don't post irrelevant things to it. You wouldn't see a Starbucks advert where they try to sell you coffee and then halfway through it they're suddenly telling you about pizzas. If your business is to sell a specific type of art, your Instagram or Twitter or whatever showcases that type of art. And that's it. Post as often as you can. You might not be able to post a brand new piece of art every single day, but maybe you can post close-ups of old pieces. Just repost old pieces. Process videos. If you're a character artist, maybe you can splash a bunch of your character commissions together into a single image to make a team or a party and post that. Maybe you can post different versions of the same image. Maybe you can post initial concept sketches. Get creative with it. You don't have to take every single one of these ideas. I wouldn't recommend that. But figure out what works for you and what the best way is to get your audience to see what you're doing. You need to get your page into people's faces as much as possible. And you need to talk about what you're doing. And don't be shy about talking about what you're doing. It's tempting to take a very passive approach to marketing and not really do or say anything about your business because you don't want to annoy people with constant messages about your product. But ask yourself, is that how any other business works? McDonald's don't worry themselves about how much their constant TV, radio or online adverts annoy people. They just put the ads up. You shouldn't treat your work any different. Obviously, you shouldn't be going into other people's pages and spaces and spamming them with, hey, you should buy my commissions. McDonald's don't walk into my house waving chicken nuggets at me. But if you're just posting on Twitter or Instagram or things like that, don't be shy about it. Think about where your audience is and how you can reach them. Maybe that means using specific hashtags, or maybe they're easier to engage with on Twitter or TikTok than Instagram, or maybe there are certain trends that your audience are likely following that you can take advantage of. Marketing is a tough thing, and you've always got to be thinking about how you can reach your audience in new ways. If you're struggling for ideas, take a look at what other successful artists do to promote their work. Just go to their social media and have a look at what they're doing and copy what works. The last thing I'll say about marketing is paid ads. Use paid advertisements. That's how real businesses operate and you're no different. Starbucks pays for ads on TV, on the radio, on the internet. You can use paid ads as well. I've had loads of success using Instagram paid ads. Once you have your commission sheet up, pay for Instagram ads to push that post out to your target audience. Yes, it will cost you a bit of money to run the ads. But in my experience, I've always made a profit. I might run an ad that cost me $20, but then I make $100 through commissions, so it's worth it. I know people don't want to use paid ads because they're paid and you don't want to spend the money. But it works. If your art is good enough, it just works. And you can do them on Instagram, on Twitter, on TikTok, on Etsy. Find wherever works for you. That's just about all the advice I can give you. Make specific things for specific audiences. Figure out your unique selling proposition. Consider more niche types of commissions to get an advantage on the market. Start no lower than $50 and work your way up in price. Talk about what you are doing online, constantly, in every way you can think of. Use paid advertisements. Just use paid advertisements. It works. If this video helped you out, do all of those things for me. And have a nice day.